Hello again, dear viewer, and welcome back to a little bit more of that Risk of Rain 2. We are finishing up our, our time in this game here, and so we are going through the roster one last time, making sure we get a little bit of time with every character. And today's character is the Engineer. As soon as I mute my Discord... Oh my god. Okay, that was quite unprofessional of me. Excuse me, dear viewers, I haven't done that in a while. What? What kind of whack-ass geometry is that? Hopu? Hopu? I see that. Don't think I don't see that. I wasted 20 seconds on that geometry. That's the time you gotta get me back, buddy. Okay. So we do not have the spider mines yet, because we do not have that achievement, but we do have the uh, thermal harpoons, which I, which I consider to be generally superior to the bubble shield, even though the bubble shield is really, really strong, don't get me wrong. I find that the, uh, the consistency that comes from the uh, thermal harpoons is just much more valuable in the long term because you have a consistent way of damaging things, which is uh, one of Engineer's primary weaknesses, is that their mouse one is just kind of not good. Uh, it takes a while to charge up with base attack speed, and uh, its damage, while it's respectable, is very delayed and a little difficult to hit all of. If this was just one shot with 800% damage, it might be a little stronger, but as of right now, it's 100 uh, each with eight shots, and that's not great, unless you can hit all of them. But, like, you know, having a mouse one that does 800% damage isn't, isn't nothing, you know? Um, part of why, uh, Captain is so strong is because their mouse one does, like, you know, uh, eight times 120, or something like that. Um, which, you know, is comparable in terms of numbers. It's only a couple hundred percent, I think above, maybe one or two. And, you know, that means on the grand scale, NG's mouse one is really not that bad. Um, you've just got to work around it, you know, start your charge, do your sprint. If I knew a little better exactly how many, uh, grenades I needed to down the enemies on the first floor, I could probably improve my first floor clear rates with NG dramatically, but I don't need to know that one thermal harpoon kills those wisps. And let me tell you, Wisps on a normal Engineer run, like a stock Engineer run, I should say, is just the most annoying thing on the world. It really is. It's so irritating to try and lob your grenades up to get one of the Wisps, and even then, it's unlikely that it'll even actually hit it. Or actually kill it, I should say. Oh, we have that wonderful minor bug where if you start sprinting too early after you channel your harpoons, it just eats them all and doesn't actually do anything. Puts them all on cooldown and does zero damage. Feels sick, man. Okay. Now these turrets should clear out the rest of them. We need to get to that teleporter as soon as we can. I would love if we could find an item on the way back. So I'm going to loop around the edge here where I haven't been before. And there's fireworks in that printer, considering that we have a med kit and a crit glasses. That is much too risky. Both of our items are good, and uh, that item is decidedly not very. Yeah, I saw those. I saw those armor-piercing rounds, and I considered it. You know, I considered it. Extra damage against bosses is very valuable. Um, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, I think we're going to take some shots at this Shrine of Chance before we head on to the teleporter. Awesome. Gasoline is not nothing, and therefore is valuable. And a green death mark. Awesome. Okay. That's uh, a long-term investment, but it'll pay off. That, I really... That could have one-shot me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> After that Blood Shrine, there was a good chance I would have just died. Okay. Okay place one up here and then I see a chest down here we are a minute behind pace so I'm really pushing it but I want as many offensive items as I can get right now Maraca is very strong at least for the time being we do have crits as well we've got a solid setup I'm just concerned about our ability to survive the first floor here Wandering Vagrant is not the worst first floor boss. Nice big hitbox means that we can hit our nice chunky 800% damage pretty consistently, more or less. 
so hopefully we will be able to heal just fine with this big dude. Oh. Okay, we're all fine. As long as we can only take chip hits every once in a while, as long as we have that little bit of time for the medkit to do its work, uh, we should be okay. We're only 37% of the way through this whole portal, so we don't need to worry about time too much. Just keep getting those thermal harpoons, hitting the boss, get some consistent damage on. And uh, let's roll this shrine, try and get some higher HP deficit on that, so we can take that to the next floor, potentially. And, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of getting better at Risk of Rain is just, like, the little optimizations to make your time just that little bit easier and hopefully not getting killed by that boss. Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good! And one of our turrets even survived. Oh, it's done. It's done. Get out of here. 82%. Awesome. We didn't even lose time to the teleporter. Red Whip is awesome! Red Whip is perfect! Red Whip is genuinely, I think, really good on Engineer. Because Engineer does a lot of running around, and the turrets can do so much work. Okay. I actually want to wait around a little bit here. So we can have our healing drones get us back up to the health threshold that will allow us to use this blood shrine. Because if we can take 93% of our HP and convert that into some money for the next floor, that'll be a huge, huge, huge deal for us. So one more set of healing beams should do it. Whatever, I don't know if they have like an internal cooldown or if it's below a certain HP threshold or whatever. Where even are my, there's my healing drone. Come on guys. Oh, this has to be like 90. Oh, Lunar Coin, there we go. I knew I heard that drop somewhere before. Okay, wait, okay. You wanna wait until just around when you start glowing, if you wanna try that trick. Basically, the deal is, um, if you collect money while the teleporter is beaming all of the XP to you that it converted out of the money, um, then you will, um, just convert the money straight into XP. But if you get it just as you're leaving, like, as the teleporter is teleporting you somewhere, the game considers you to already be in the next stage, or doesn't have enough time to give you the money before the stage ends, whichever is more convenient for you, <laughs> as an explanation. Um, those are my two running theories as to why that works. And uh, you get a, a little bit of free money. So we're already behind pace, but uh, we have that red whip, and we have a leg, and we just got an ATG missile. So our item set is pretty strong. I see an offensive chest down over by the teleporter, which I've just seen. So we are going straight to it. We don't want to dilly-dally on this floor. We're already behind pace. I have a primordial cube. Uh, let's set up a defensive line sort of here. So once those arm, that'll do some good damage to things sort of pestering us from a distance. And then I think we place our turret on this rock here. Ideally, you want to place it in an area where the grounded melee enemies won't have a good chance to get it, because there's a lot of chip damage that comes from those types of enemies. Oh, this is strong. Doing doing this good against Big The Rock Jackson um, is encouraging. I think it's the ATG missiles, honestly. The ATG missiles are doing so much work for us. This is a really good run. I'm really glad this is the first run. This is really encouraging. I haven't done any warm-ups or anything today. This is the first run of the day, so... I guess it's just the engineer brain. I don't know. I play weirdo gimmick characters a lot of the time. Engineer is uh, a little controversial. I don't know. I, I At least I think they are. Engineer is a, a playstyle that uh, isn't often something that gels with a lot of people. This sort of stationary defense sort of... Um, I don't know. Methodical makes me sound pretentious for liking it, but sort of this more methodical uh, gameplay style where you're... You do a lot of damage as Engineer, actually. Like, the, the Harpoon steal 500, the, the Mine steal 900, you know? Your DPS is not bad. You, hell, 800% on the Mouse 1. Like, your percentages overall across your whole kit are really high. Um, they just take a little while to get there, you know? You've gotta, like, charge up your Mouse 1, or you've gotta lay down your Mines preemptively, or you've gotta take
take some time to target the harpoons, you know. And, uh, you know, for some people that can be kind of boring or frustrating, you know, I understand that. The sort of lack of reactivity is one of the great challenges of playing Engineer properly, and that's why I like the Thermal Harpoon so much, is because it's the shortest distance between pressing the button and doing the damage that you have on Engineer. Um, but I really, I really like the, the, like, I've, I tell my friends, like, the mark of a good Engineer class is how much you feel like Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone, you know? Where, like, I can set up a mine in front of a stone golem, and it'll, like, slowly walk into it, and then when it arms and that radius increases, it blows up immediately because the golem was at the perfect spacing. Like, that sort of thing is why I play Engineer. That's really, really fun. Uh, I think a second med kit is not a miss here. Uh, our turrets will be taking a good amount of damage, and so having extra healing when they uh, sort of enter a low point will be pretty useful. And medkit is also just generally one of the better healing items. I don't remember exactly what was in the rest of that multi shot, but um, you know, I, I I had some some doubts, but you know, you can you got to make your decisions quick. <laughs> Uh, second crits is a no-brainer. There was also really, really good stuff in that multi-shot, but one of them was crits, so crits are the one to go for. And if we can get a Harvester Scythe, that would be awesome. Get some active healing on our turrets, rather than just the healing that they'll be getting after the damage is over. Yeah, and, um, you know, that's of course discounting Bustling Fungus, which is an, an item that is only useful in Engineer. And is very fun. I love I love Bustling Fungus. I, I actually genuinely really love Bustling Fungus overall. I think it was one of my favorite items in the first game, and it, it's really, uh, it's kind of a meme in this one. I don't know exactly what the standings were for the, the item in the first game. I played in Risk of Rain 1, but I did not engage at all with the community of it. So I don't know what the, what the general consensus is. I just know that Sticky Bombs are apparently broken in that game, um, and a couple other things. But that game's fun as hell. I love Risk of Rain, you know. I mean, it's evident. I've been playing it for several hundred hours before the channel and, like, several tens of hours after it. And I'll probably end up playing it more for the channel in the long run. I'm just trying to branch out, you know. I'm not trying to dedicate too hard to just this. But I really love this game. You know, Risk of Rain is up there, you know? Um, there's there's sort of a, a theory I've got going on. It's not necessarily a genre. It's more of a descriptor. You know how you would call something like a... Oh, God. You know, like how things can have RPG elements without being an RPG. You know, I feel like that sort of uh, distinction can be made. I like to call it a systemic game. A game that is based less around a handcrafted like, quote-unquote, handcrafted developer, uh, developer-sanctioned experience, and more about developers creating systems that bounce off of each other in interesting ways, you know? So, uh, like, Breath of the Wild is a fantastic, it's the perfect, uh, the perfect game to talk about with this, because that game is all about systems, you know? Like, the, the things that separate Breath of the Wild from a standard Zelda game outside of, like, the format, are the ways you can mess around with the mechanics and the way that all of the, uh, you can, like, understand the rules behind the system and exploit them in ways that the developer may or may not have even thought of, you know? And, you know, I consider Risk of Rain to be sort of in, uh, in that systemic vein. It's got some, like, systemic elements, let's say, because the game is so Sort of built around an internal math engine, sort of the timer up here, scaling all of your enemies, you know, and the, the numerical values of the items stacking when you get multiple of them, and things like that. The game sort of, like, after a while, if you get far enough, you get to a game experience that the developer never really intended. Like, it's not supposed to exist. You know, like, um, eventually, if you go multiple hours into a run, uh, it gets so broken that it'll just spawn scavengers, because there's just so much money in the internal spawn system that that's all it can spawn. Like, all it can legally spawn. Or something like that. You know? And I think, um, we're starting to see more and more systemic games. I think really since Minecraft, 
Minecraft is another easy example of a systemic game. There's a lot of, um, like, the the basic idea of left-click to pick up block, right-click to place it, or interact with it, has gone so far in that game. And there's so many ways that, like, entities interact with each other and things like that that you can really get into and understand. And I really, that, that sort of... That sort of loop is really engaging, you know? And it's the reason why, um, like, Breath of the Wild speedruns are so interesting. It's because they're using those systems in ways that you don't even know if they're supposed to be real, you know? If that was something they intended to be possible or not. And I think that's really interesting. Um, because, like, I don't know. I don't want to say we're only now getting to a point where we can achieve that. Because, like, um, immersive sim, you know, the immersive sim genre like Thief the Dark Project and Deus Ex and, and various other games like it, you know, they sort of hit that area where they're trying to sort of simulate a world rather than, um, like, curate a, an experience in that sort of way. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, like, it's a, it's, it's odd. It's sort of an odd distinction to make, but I really, like, I really do think it's an accurate descriptor. You know, I guess, um, like, emergent gameplay is, is the, the thing I'm getting at. Where, like, the systems are designed in such a way to encourage emergent gameplay scenarios, which is, like, <laughs> yeah, look at me, big brain gamer, knowing all of my words. But, like, it's true. <laughs> I do know all my words, and they are used to describe things in, in specific ways, and I think that is an appropriate way to describe the phenomenon I'm, I'm talking about, you know? Oh, I really want to... Hey, hey, Big Slappy. Hey, Big Slappy. You want to come over here to my minefield? It's real fun. You want to come over here? You want to come teleport directly on me? Yeah! Yeah! See ya, sucker! <laughs> oh, yes! Shatter Spleen is awesome! That is exactly what I want to see right now. Oh, Shatter Spleen is going to make us go so crazy, because we now have... We had 30% crit and no bleed, now we have 30% crit and bleed. <laughs> oh, yes! This run is popping! It's I'm loving it. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Loving it, loving it. Oof. Toy boat. Toy boat! Damn. That is hard to say. Sorry, I'm a little all over the place right now. But this is the sort of energy that you gotta bring into an engineer run to counteract how goddamn slow you're going. I'm really glad I got that red whip on floor one? Floor one? No. Floor two? No, yeah, because we got a green from a chest in floor one, so it had to, it was the floor one teleporter reward. Regardless, I got it, it's good. I like it. I like it on engineer quite a lot because um, targeting your missiles doesn't count as being in combat, only firing them does. So, uh, or no, I don't even know if firing them does. Oh, right, we should, like, summon the turrets, because the turrets have hit scan. That's the thing. You're only, uh, well, I guess your homing kinda counts, but not literally. Um, but, like, the only hit scan that you really have as engineer is your turrets. And I think that's why people tend to characterize Engineer as getting carried by the turrets, because they're not entirely wrong. Um, the turrets can deal with a lot of common threats that the Engineer is, has a hard time with, is the, the long and short of it. And I don't think that's necessarily like a, a flaw of the character, it's just something you have to keep in mind uh, when you think about the playstyle, you know? Okay, I see that Wandering Vagrant but I'm too busy popping off on this blood shrine. I have like $1,500 right now. I can use that to open all these chests because on Siren's Call, I don't have to worry about grinding a whole ton of money for something. Now, I do want to get out of here sooner than later, but I'm not getting out of here without my free red. Because if that's Aegis or Nukahana's opinion, like there's a lot of items that are a little less, a, a little difficult to do on a lot of characters. Like I find Aegis to be troublesome. Um, like if you get Aegis first red, that's fine. 
but you're not really doing enough healing that you're getting a lot of value out of it. You know, I find it hard to get value out of, like, Aegis and stuff on a lot of characters. But Engineer can take great advantage of, like, Aegis and Nikahana's opinion, because their turrets are getting hit so much that they're naturally going to be healing a lot, so Nikahana's opinion is really strong. And you already want um, to dump a bunch of healing because you're running, you want to run Fungus. And uh, that is a really, really easy way to just get a ton of overheal. And that's a really good thing, because it, it effectively doubles your turret's health bar. And that means double the space to use to heal, uh, to outheal an enemy, you know? I thought I got rid of you. My turrets must have died from something. I still need to find these eggs. Ooh. Ooh. Tri-tip dagger, you say? So we have a chance to get a bleed even if we don't crit. So, that's fucking good. <laughs> I'm allowed- I think I'm allowed to curse. I heard some memes about the first minute or two being in a curse- amp curse unfriendly zone. But I think I can curse now. I'm gonna build. I don't know how YouTube works anymore, because YouTube- it- smartly, I should add does not tell people how it works. Um, back when people knew how YouTube worked one-to-one, -one, we had a lot of a lot of problems that are a little bit worse than the things we have right now. Um, no one really knows how YouTube works, and that's not all not necessarily a bad thing, but it also means that for newer creators, or like me, or creators that really rely on YouTube income to live, like a lot of people. I, like, I would say s at least several hundred, if not multiple thousands of people live off of YouTube. Uh, at the very, 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 very least, you know? Like, excluding people who are, like, partnered with YouTube for some form or, or another, you know? Like, outside of just the standard AdSense monetization program. You know, like, people with insider contacts and or multi-channel networks or whatever. But, you know, it, everything's always more complicated than that. I'm, either way, I'm really on tangents today, but, you know, no one really knows how YouTube works, and that's not a bad thing, because if, like, people are already exploiting the algorithm, and they don't properly know how it works, so imagine what it would be like if people actually did, you know? <laughs> Yo, eggs? I've been, like, low-key dying, okay? Where are all these eggs being? That was both of the last two we needed. Okay. I will destroy this ball with missiles. None of those crit. I cannot believe it, but that's gonna hurt a lot. 930 from that missile. That's the, you know, that's part of the reason ATG missile is so strong. Is because, um, it deals damage, like, it deals three times the damage of the hit. Not that, like, not 300% damage does 300% of the hit that rocked it. And when your initial hit is doing 500%, that's a 1500% damage hit. That's like a loader punch, you know? Adding a loader punch to your strongest move is really good. Oh no. Ooh I just wanted to make sure I would only get hit by one of them. <laughs> because I'm at 2 HP. Please heal me. Okay. Uh, this is where we thank the Lord for the blessing that is medkit and for the blessing that is Old War's health kit. Because it is very possible if we did not have Old War stealth kit that we would have been hit by that brass contraption. And it is definitely possible if we did not have the medkit that we would have simply uh, just died by fall damage or whatever there. You can't literally die by fall damage unless you turn on the modifier. But, you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Uh, by the way, Wake of Vultures, whatever. <laughs> I think I've- I'm pretty sure I've said my piece on Wake of Vultures by now. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It is literally not bad. But... 
uh, you know, it's okay. There's a lot of reds that, like, make your run go crazy. That's not one of them. Oh, hell, I should... <laughs> oh, yeah, let me just walk around the teleport area talking about roll to the shit while I'm out here not just wasting time. I would love one Willow test. Like, you know, our run is fine. I, like, I don't think I really need much that we don't already have. Shatter Spleen is just such an incredible get for us, and I'm so not used to getting Shatter Spleen regularly. So, like, I'm, I'm on Cloud9. I don't, I don't need anything. I love Shatter Spleen. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's just strong. Like, you read it, and you're like, oh my god, is that combining the two strongest damage effects in the game into one ridiculous strong item? Yes, I will take it. You don't even need to think. Oh, did they make Mire Urn not trash, by the way? Did they, like, make it not hurt your friends or something? Like, I've said this before. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. I love this. I love this run. This run is crazy. Shatter Spleen and Molten Perforator are so strong. Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! Look at this! That's not okay! That's not okay! Who- I don't even need Will of the Wisp! I have Shatter Spleen! Look at all those explosions! Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay. That's fine. This is fine! This is fine! This is fine! This run's fine! I would love more of all of it. In fact. I don't think we've gotten a bad item yet. Even Fungus. Even Leeching Seed, kinda. Like, out of all the items we've gotten, Leeching Seed is probably the worst. And even that, eh, it's not bad. It's not that bad. It's not like a key, you know? So I think I have to go for a, a stage 5 Mithrix clear here. This run's too fucking strong, you know? I see bad enemies, though. <laughs> Stage 5. Stage 5 is where your hubris can really catch up to you if you're not careful. You know, I, I was just thinking about this earlier today. I have a really hard time with descriptions. You may have noticed, if you're following along, that the last several videos, uh, essentially since the, the big Artificer Marathon, it's all just been song lyrics. <laughs> I thought, uh, for the, for the, um, Artificer Marathon, I would choose songs about climate change, or songs that reference fire in some manner. Um, in, I think, every video, I managed to get both, which was really cool. That was all, that was an incredibly close run-in with that Elbow Murray, and hey, turret, uh, woo! That's fine. That was totally planned. Another med kit? Jesus. How much do we need? <laughs> med kit printer! <laughs> I mean... Listen. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. But I would rather not give up all of this goodness, especially this crit goodness, for extra med kits. Would love a rejuvenation rack. Rejuvenation rack would be absurd. Would also be absurd on the final boss, but... I mean, that's future me's problem. You always want to get as strong as you can while you're on your run, even if you know Mythrix is going to take all your items. Because when Mythrix takes your items, their health is... His health is docked dramatically. Dramatically. It's ridiculous. Yeah, these, uh, these mushroom guys are really the bane of your turret's existence. Ah, unlucky. is ready. So I will summon my turret here, over by the Shrine of Combat, pick up the extra glasses for a 40% crit chance extravaganza, and then cry because I got a mini-boss. Well, actually, no, on this floor, that counts as a full boss, right? Oh my god. Did you see all those missiles? I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. 
the important thing is that we keep firing so that we can get lead stacks to continue to stack. The important thing is that we get at least one shot off while the lead is still on. That leads. Wah! Okay, bye. Oh my god. The Shatter Spleen? The Molten Perforator? Am I starting to like proc chain out the, out the whizzy? Oh, there's the teleporter. Let's pick up more healing. More healing sounds like a good idea. I don't even remember what we need to do to, uh, to get the other mines. I think it's like clear a teleporter boss in less than five seconds or something. Ooh, tougher times. Excellent. Very solid defensive item. That's our second one? Yeah, second one. Alright, I'm just going. I'm just going. I think, uh, time is of the essence here. We're strong enough. We still haven't cleared that, uh, parent from earlier, but if I can move the guys away from the boss, we can get the stacks rolling. Fat stacks. Look at those stacks. Bam. Another Molten Perforator. Don't mind if I do, bro. <laughs> uh, if we were looping, imagine if we got a Shatter Spleen printer. Could get three of them. Oh no, the emergency drone! Oh my god, elite parents have so much health. So, I don't know, let's place them like right here. Hopefully those will arm by the time something hits them. Okay, the parent is down, so now we've just kind of got aerial suppression to worry about. Get this drone's back up. Oh, the Shatter Spleen! The Shatter Spleen, bro! It's just so good. It's so good. I'm so glad they added it. All of the fucking Molten Perforator 2 feels so fucking cool. It feels so cool to get Molten Perforator off. It's like a shower of ATG missiles, you know? Because each of those fireballs does 300% the same as an ATG. Although I don't know if that's 300% raw or 300% of the initial damage. I'd imagine it's 300% raw. So it's not too big? Like, ATG, the reason ATG is so good is because it gets so big. Like, huge based on the actual thing you throw on it. You know? Oh my god. Sorry if you guys can hear that noise when I do it. It's adjusting my chair. If I lean back too far, my chair slips off sort of the plastic cover I've got down here so that the wheels don't get caught in my carpet, and it's it just gets so annoying. I really need to get a new one, but, you know, that's all still in the works. It's all still planning out. Now, uh, we don't have too many items, but we are making really good time. Like, uh, I don't know. Because, eh. like, I remember when we were doing those one loopers back when uh, Mythrix was still vulnerable during the item stealing phase, when we were doing those one loopers, um, I would clear around 50 minutes. And this is like a 34 minute run so far. So this will be a nice, clean, simple little run. I'll probably do like a, a fun bonus one at the end of this, because uh, this is a bit of a shorter video because we got this first try. But that's just, you know, engineer. I'm really confident in my engineer play, actually. Do we have any huke? No, that's the missile. Alright, let's just hope that this turret can solo that guy. Oh yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> One of those guys can't even do enough damage to outkill it, so... Like, watch the, if you watch the health bar, it, assuming it gets a shot off again, next time it gets a shot off, you'll see. Uh, no, I think that was the Topaz brooch going off, so... Success? Didn't even have to touch it. Yeah, here, come into the minefield, dummy. It's gonna take a sec, but it'll get there eventually. Yep, 
yeah, look at that health bar on the bottom, or on the top left there. There is no way one of those big dudes is gonna get their ass. Moon physics. I love the moon physics. Does it mess with the physics of my arc? That would suck. Like, I don't know, actually. But if it did, it would probably make it more straight, like, closer to hit scan. So, honestly, it might not be a bad thing. See, what would have really pulled this up over the edge would be, like, a Chrono Bobble or something. So we could potentially be getting some more consistent death mark stuff going on. But, you know, when you're going for a stage 6, you got to take what you can, you know? <laughs> Ouchie. I'm glad that didn't kill me. Those usually, like, really hurt. But I guess that's, you know, I've mentioned the loops before. You should come here after one loop, just for fun. I don't know, I find a stage six clear to be too short, but I guess that's just because I spent, like, several months playing this game where looping once and getting to stage three was the clear condition, and that just feels right to me, you know? But uh, I appreciate that you can clear a lot earlier because these 40 minute runs feel a lot tighter. You know, they feel a lot, uh, a lot sort of... My, my brain said, say the word crunchier there. That is not the word I'm looking for. Satisfying? You know, it's like a, it's like shorter. It's like shorter, easier to process, you know, it's like a snack compared to like a, a risk of rain run, like a proper ass risk of rain run. Especially if you plan to go multiple loops, you know? You had to chunk out like an hour. <laughs> multiple hours if you wanted to go multiple loops. So I have a green scrap. I would like to get a free red if I could. But uh, that will require the Lakitu being nice to me and putting me up on the cauldrons, thank you! Come on! Hopu, you're the one who didn't give me any extra jumps. Don't fuck me on this. Are you kidding? Okay, it's gotta be from up here then. Yeah, there's, okay, I'm, I'm gonna hit this easy now. I was just jumping a little too early. Uh, Meat Hook, Aegis, both very strong. Hold on, how many greens do I even have? I have the Death Mark, the Red Whip, the ATG, the Stealth Kit, the Scrap, and the Leeching Seed. So it's guaranteed to get rid of the Scrap. I would love to keep the ATG. That would be a huge deal for my damage. So the question is, do I want Meat Hook? Or do I want Aegis? Or do I want nothing? Most of these were at... I'm gonna take the Aegis. Damn it! What did we keep? We kept the Red Whip? Of all things? Whatever. I think the Aegis is going to be better in the long run, because uh, the turrets. Um, now we can place both turrets right next to each other. They will heal each other. We can double up the healing from our two fungus, and then that overheals onto their health bar. It's very strong. Very strong synergy. And, of course, the medkits are going crazy. We have four medkits. Which means we need to keep the pain on the boss, but uh, we have turrets, so that'll be hopefully pretty trivial. Hey, big guy! Wanna come to my turret, turret infested paradise with your 10 bleed stacks already? Here, have fun with those mines. There we go. Alright. Now, hopefully. That decision to get rid of most of our green items wasn't a mistake. But also, we do not give the boss that many items. We only have one row of items, which is pretty slim, pretty light. But uh, we have a lot of stacks of good stuff. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, I forgot how much I loved this boss theme. I keep pressing four instead of R. <laughs> All right, Dingus, come here. Come here. It's no trouble at all. He's gonna keep focusing the turrets, looks like. At least for the time. It is really hard to keep track of this guy. God damn. Oh, okay. Ouchie. That hurts. That hurts. That hurts. Woo! It's okay, though. It looks like my mind's had enough time to arm, and that messed with his aggro. All right. Keep him in turret range. Now the 
turrets are healing each other. That's doubling up the healing. And we have all our drones still? Yo. Okay, this run's pretty strong. We're gonna, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I'm telling ya. Ouchie. Just barely hit that again. God, that's gonna be the death of me. He's gonna keep trying. But he's never gonna be able to out-damage our healing. It's just not possible. Because every time he's sitting back and doing the slam there, we're overhealing a little bit. Okay, let's put the Primordial Cube directly on the turret's face for fun. Just get as many enemies nearby into their sight lines as possible. I'm very glad these Lunar Chimeras count as bosses, because we will get our, what, 60% damage increase from the anti-armor rounds there. Oh man, they almost got him! Yeah, I guess if, like, the the Wisp variant and the Golem variant both do their big hit at once, it would probably do enough. But, uh, that would require their AI cooperating in ways that they are just incapable of doing. So. Okay. Phase 2, part 1. Place our turrets a little closer. Can we use the cube? Is the cube effective? That is the question. It appears to be? It appears to at least mess with this pathing. Oh, bad. Okay. And these... Oh, these ads don't count as bosses, do they? Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh, this might be it, homies. Oh, this might be it, homies. Two. Three. Four. Five. somewhere. Alright, I'll focus on the ad. Oh my god, another one! Oh, don't kill my turret. Oh, Jesus. Oh no. Just get these guys away from me, please. out of here. Woo! Okay, two. Fuck! Ah! <laughs> yeah, that was really close. That was really close. Ah! Uh, that was a fucking... Ah! Uh, that was really good. That was really good. I love Engineer, dude. You just have to think about the game in a little bit of a different way, and it opens up just such a different, interesting play style. Either way, if my gameplay and or commentary improved your day even just that nice little bit, I would very much appreciate it. If you use the avenues YouTube has given you, those would be the like, comment, and subscribe buttons if you're curious to tell me that I'm doing a good job. Make sure you give your pets a lot of extra love from me today, and I will see you next time.